this tutorial we're going to talk about how to use the shape tools, in particular the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to use this for diagramming purposes and here we're actually just going to demo creating some symbols for lighting and how to use these tools to do that. The shape tools are all kind of stacked together. By default you'll see the rectangle tool, but I'm actually going to click and hold on this icon so that you can do a range of tools. We'll do the ellipse tool, the shortcut for that is L. Now the first step in creating uh, this shape is you're going to click and drag, but you'll notice as you're clicking and dragging uh, that you can actually hold uh, Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and it actually starts the circle from the center. And again, if you hold Shift, so I'm, in this case I'm holding Option and Shift on my Mac or Alt and Shift on a PC, create that circle from the middle and it's creating a perfect circle. So we'll just kind of start with one like this. Now you're going to notice that it's actually a solid white and I'm going to move it over some of the line work in AutoCAD so you can see it's solid white right here with a black outline. That's because uh, the fill right here is set as white. What I'm going to do is actually uh, double click on this and because I'm doing a lighting diagram just as a demonstration I'm going to grab a yellow color right here and just say OK. Now for the, uh, for the outline, or the stroke in this case, I'm going to double click on this and just change it to a white. And more than just a white line, what I want to do is go over to the stroke uh, and I want to change it to a dash line. So I'm going to do a one point stroke with, so we'll go one point, maybe a three point stroke with a one point dash. So I'm checking dash, giving it a gap, and if you kind of zoom in here you'll see uh, now it's actually only showing a point and a half because that white actually extends out. You can see right here where it's kind of hanging over the uh, the tree line here. It actually goes a uh, point and a half out and a point and a half in to make up the three total points of that right there. And so this is going to be kind of my first symbol. What I'm going to do is actually create three of these, stack them on top of each other so I can get uh, kind of a gradient of colors here. So we'll move this one down. I'm going to hold option on my keyboard, Alt if you're on a PC, and I'm going to click and drag this over. What this is doing is it's actually making a copy of it. I'll hold Shift as well just to keep it in line. So again, Alt or Option, click and drag, holding Shift, it puts it in a straight line. So I've got three different versions of these right here. And I'm going to click on this. As you'll notice, I'll, I'll overlap them right here. You'll just see that these shapes just kind of overlap each other. And there's a couple different properties that uh, that we can affect to actually make this multiply on, on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, click on uh, all three of these. I'm just going to overlap so that I can see them. I'll uh, hold shift and click on all three. I'm actually going to go to uh, this uh, toggle right here. We're going to go to something called appearance. So I've got it logged right here. Uh, but you can just go to window and appearance. It will open up. What you're going to notice is that you can affect the fill and the stroke independent. So you can change the opacity of the fill. We could do that here by clicking and maybe turning down the opacity and now you can start to see them uh, beef up. But I get the, I keep the crisp, uh, the crispness of the white. Another option right here might be to change it from normal to multiply. This looks, works like multiply in, uh, in Photoshop where we're sort of adding those colors to each other. Again, we're just doing this for the fill uh, right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'll come back. I'm going to uh, go up to the shape size right here. You can actually just um, click inside, use your arrow keys, and it sort of hops up a little bit. Uh, so we'll change that one to one inch. Uh, I'm going to click on this one, change it to 0.75, and then take this one. And again, I'm just uh, clicking inside, putting the arrow key down, and, and dropping it down to 0.5. Uh, because these are linked, it's changing both the width and the height, keeping them perfect circles in here. You also notice that it changed the uh, stroke weight and dash. Uh, because that's transforming with uh, the changing of the size. So I'm going to hold shift again, click on all of these, go back to stroke. Again, this is under window and stroke. And I'm going to change this back to, we'll say, uh, 1.5 maybe for the weight. Uh, and then change the dash to 0.5 possibly. You can obviously adjust these uh, to whatever scale you're working at. I might bump this up to 2 and 0.5. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm in my move tool, so or my selection tool, and that's what I've been hitting to, to select these, just clicking on them uh, by hitting V is the shortcut for this tool, holding shift to select multiple ones. When you have the selection tool up, uh, you'll notice that you've got these alignment tools up top. So this helps us uh, with uh, spacing in these, uh, but also helps us for alignment. And so what I can do is I can actually align these all uh, with horizontal. They'll all line up like this. 
and then I'll do a, a vertical alignment as well. It's going to stack them all on top of each other. Now I could t continue to play with the uh, the opacities right here, or the multiplier, or even go back and you know change the color a little lighter if I wanted to for all three of these to get the desired colors uh, and of course the uh, weights for those lines around it. But I think that's going to be enough for me right now. Last thing that I want to do is actually just want to put a little icon right in the center. I like to use the text tool. I'm going to use a plus just for this one. Uh, we might change it from black to uh, something that kind of fits our lighting scheme colors a little better. I'll go with an orange right here. And I'm just going to try to drop that right in the center. It's not going to work alignment wise as well. I mean, uh, what I'm going to do is actually just select all of these and see that I need to move my uh, plus down just a little bit. So I'll grab it, move it down, and select again until, you know, maybe I get that dot right there perfect in the middle. So I'm going to go smidge down a little more. Uh, it'll be pretty close. In fact, I think that looks good. Once I have this, I'm going to highlight all of it. Uh, right click on it and group these together. So I've got one symbol that I've made. I think the white's probably a little too bold on here. I might play with that. Uh, certainly the uh, rings, probably more than three is too many, but I might even uh, jump in and make this one instead of, you know, 0.5, drop it down a little more. Uh, again, this one down, something like this, right? Uh, you can continue to play with this uh, for quite some time. I'm inside the group right now by double clicking on it. Obviously, I need to go back and change this and do one more change right there. So it's worth fiddling with this because we want to obsess over the icons or the, the group that we have. Uh, because really at this point, now that I've got it here, I'm going to double click outside of it. I can select this group, hit V for my selection tool, hold down uh, Alt on my PC or Option on my Mac, and I can click and drag these around. And so you'll notice that you can actually begin to create uh, sort of a feel for what lighting is going to look like. Now there's more than just uh, a single type of light. You're probably going to have a hierarchy of lights that range from uh, lights uh, that are more street lights that probably have a larger spray and they might even have a custom shape uh, to them, in which case you might use the pen tool to sort of click um, these shapes and, and create uh, however that cone is going to work. I'm just going to hit escape. Um, and delete that as well. But uh, you've got street lights that might have a custom shape and certainly have a bigger spray. Uh, you've got more pedestrian lights that might align the sidewalks. You might even have lights that are um, you know, smaller bollard lights in here. In fact, I'm going to create one bollard light uh, using the same uh, symbol right here. I'm just going to copy it down. I've got three bollards that run through here. So if you're not familiar with a bollard light, basically a, a bollard that has a light sort of in that cap and, and shines down uh, at the uh, sort of at a foot level. Uh, so on this, obviously that bollard light is going to be much smaller. I'm going to grab these, um, go down one notch, uh, bring this one down quite a bit, uh, and of course this one down as well. Uh, just to change the size. Now, to prevent confusion, what I might do is um, select all of these. I'm going to change the color a little bit right here. We'll go to maybe something a little more uh, in the orange family. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab the plus sign, highlight it, and uh, change that to maybe a deeper red right here just to distinguish from my other lights. Uh, again, I'd want to select all of these and change the uh, uh, outside line weight just to be consistent. We'll say 0 0.25 uh, and a 0.5 weight for these. So I'll zoom in and select all of the circles and we'll say 0.25 for the dash, 0.5 right there, and just some sort of consistency. Now, one last thing that you might want to do uh, is I'm going to copy this up. Let's say there's a situation where you have just a half of a light coming out. Maybe it's a light that's sort of on a building, uh, something like that. What, what would you do in this case? Well, there's a couple things. You'd probably still keep the symbol the same. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on this. I'm going to ungroup uh, this particular symbol. And we're instead of using our selection tool, we're going to use our direct selection tool. It allows me to actually click on a particular point right here and delete that point. Now what it's going to do is it's still going to keep this one, this one, and this point right here. Now let's say I also uh, you know, just want to do, in this case, we'll uh, keep clicking with the direct selection on these pieces. 
in this piece again right here. That works for kind of a half moon. There's certain scenarios where you might want to take this shape and I'm going to grab this and pull it up this direction. And let's say I just want to do, um, you know, a three quarter uh, light. So what I'm going to have to do is actually click here. I'm going to grab my pen tool and then click a point right here. I've got to add a point to this line so that I can then select that point and delete. Now I'm also going to have to come back in and add another point in here. So we'll grab this and we'll click and we'll add and bring it back up here. And so it's a couple extra steps in there, but you could also do that as well. Of course, you'd have to do it for all three rings in that instance. And so if you sort of create these symbols, obsess over just a few, get them just right, feel good about the colors before you start copying them around. Uh, in the end, you're going to you know, maybe display them uh, all across the site uh, just to give a feel for how the lighting is going to work. Now, similar to other projects, you probably need to come down and create some type of legend. If it's as simple as just a name uh, and uh, a small thumbnail of the symbol, that could work. Or if it goes as far as creating uh, or adding images of what maybe that bollard or pedestrian or parking lot light uh, might look like in there. So I uh, keep this in mind as you're working uh, on diagrams in Adobe Illustrator. We're obviously using uh, lights uh, as the example here, but the shape tools can be a powerful way for creating a whole range of diagrams that you might work on.